everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 133 of Daryl20's Let's Play series, where I'm currently just prepping a little bit for our further Woot automations. Last episode, uh, we were having a good time with Woot, getting into it, figuring out how the new version of Woot works, and uh, so far it's pretty neat. There's definitely some new and interesting stuff here. Um, I'm gonna hold off on placing this one, but it will probably be winding up needing it. We'll see. Mm, I think you're right. I don't think you're right. I don't think you're right. Boop. Go away, you. Um, yeah. So what we've got going on today is me wanting to be ready to automate further aspects of Woot. Uh, and I think we're pretty close to being ready for that. Uh, what I can actually do... place you there that should be cool okay and so that's that that's ready to go with that and that looks cool so what we were making uh last episode is we're working on i want to get a tier two woot factory so that we can start creating the resources to make the tier three four or five woot factory we're going to need a few things to get that going uh, we're going to need quite a few things to get that going, actually. Um, and here's a list of all the stuff that we need. We need amaranth blocks and amber blocks and factory connectors and all this other stuff. So I'm going to start right now um, continuing to automate the components that go into making these blocks. Then I'll make a majority of the blocks off camera. We'll come back once they're all ready. We'll build the Woot Structure Mark II. We'll look at how it works. We will also have to automate the fuel source for it which is that cerulean liquid stuff that I showed you guys last episode. Cerulean something something. Cerulean blocks? No, that's not it. Some kind of liquid from Woot. Canadas uh, fluid. Yeah, I was way off. I was way off. Canadas fluid. Cerulean is one of the uh, Celadon, Cerulean, Byzantium. I think that's your tier four. Right? This is tier three, four, and five, I want to say. Factories. Anyway, anyway. We got to do the things today. So um, if I want to make amaranth blocks, right? And, you know, we wanted to make 10 of them. We're going to need some magenta dye plates, it looks like. Um, so why are you only missing three, though? I think it's... I think each cerulean block, you get four per... Yeah, so that makes sense. Cool. So what we want to do... Uh, amaranth blocks, we need magenta dye plates. So for this to work, we're going to need to make magenta dye casings and craft them into magenta dye plates. Cool. Um, apparently dye mixers can actually produce these, but I think these you get more of per resource, right? So to make these, we need either a magenta dye plate or a magenta dye. So that's actually interesting. It's actually quite interesting. Part of me is like, could I create a loop kind of system for this? Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking about it. Refined storage and applied energistics, neither of those mods ever really liked the idea of taking one of an item and making it into more than one of an item. It gets very confused by that concept, right? So... I'm thinking we should just do the magenta dye recipe and call it a day. Now, we are going to need a dye casing, which is going to be gunpowder and obsidian, but that shouldn't be a big deal, right? Um, at all, hopefully. So, boop, boop, and boop, and Bob's your uncle. Die, die, my darling. <laughs> all right. I love mods that have, like, the cheeky kind of... Uh, achievements. They're fun times. Fun times. All right, so then you, we're going to say magenta die casing looks like this. We will do extra C. And I wouldn't mind actually having a couple magenta die on me, right? So I want to make sure that you know that your magenta die, I know your extra C, apply that guy. So now, in theory, um, can I come over here? And for processing mode, we're going to want magenta dye turns into magenta dye casing. Right, so you... Can I drag this? I can. Beautiful. And that's going to be 16 of these. And that's it. Right? 16 of these. 
So then I pop you into this. So now let's watch what happens if I'm not mistaken. If I ask for, actually, no, 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 hold on. This is here, right? This one gets the other pattern, which is gonna be you. But let's make sure that our fluids, pure dye fluid is not listed there, right? We don't want it to, sh because we shift clicked it and refined storage supports fluid crafting, pay attention to that, right? We're just gonna assume that this thing is always gonna have the fluid that it needs, okay? And this guy's in the process, I threw another stack of each dye in there so that we would be good to go. All right, so now let's try magenta dye plate. We are missing a magenta die. Right, I should teach you how to make magenta dies. Because you're probably going to need to know how to do that. Uh, is there a sneaky, clever, awesome way? That looks like your best bet. That looks like your best bet. We're going to have to make sure that all the... All the other things are ready to go. But let's do this. So if I say this, please. Start, start. Hooray! Is working? Yes! Yes, it did! Okay, cool! All right, awesome! So now if I want an amaranth block, we need 10 of these bad boys. So this guy, boom, boom, makes the other two that it needs, and then we're good. Sweet! All right! One down, many to go. So Amber Blocks is gonna be our next one. And Amber, I'm assuming, is orange dye, right? A uh, brown, actually, brown. Okay, cool, today I learned. All right, Amber Blocks need brown dye plates. So we're gonna need brown dye, um, which comes from cocoa beans, right? Is there like a sneaky, clever cocoa beans thing I could do? Ooh, botany pots. Jungle trees yield cocoa beans 1% of the time? 1% of the time? That's not gonna work for me. Can't we, clever, clever, ooh, phytogenic insulator can do that. Hmm. Hmm. Can double your cocoa beans. Hmm. Or we could just set up, you know, something else. Because you could also do this way. You could do, I mean, we're not, I don't want to go too crazy, if you know what I mean. So we'll have to see. Hmm. Can I just take cocoa beans? We have a few, right? Can I just stick them on a jungle wood? You know Dyer, he just wants to automate all the things. Now here's a question. Boop, boop. Hmm. Yes. What's your status? Age two, is that what you are? See on the right, age zero, age one, age two. So when he hits age two, we want to break him and place a new cocoa bean. I feel like that's doable, right? We could automate that. Could be a little fun side project. All right, so we're gonna want a placer. We're gonna want a breaker. We're gonna want a redstone kind of detector. Yeah, you know what we could do it with? Uh, integrated dynamics. Does that sound doable? I feel like that's doable. Should we do it that way? I like that plan. I like that plan. Yeah, where should we where should we where should we do this at? I don't know if I wanted to sit back there, but definitely somewhere. Um, let's look at integrated dynamics. Um, so there's the player simulator. There's the world item importer and exporter. World block importer and exporter. World block exporter. We're gonna want these two things. Uh, we're going to want the block reader. Entity reader, block reader. 
And then we're going to want some of these. We're going to want a variable store. We're going to want a portable logic dude. We're probably going to want some of these guys. And why not? Let's get a display just to show what's what. Okay, I like this plan. So let's just find a happy place to connect into down here. Doesn't super matter where this lives, right? Like this is just like a random a random little thing that doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Seems good enough. Okay. So we want our variable store with our cable and this dude. Okay. Now let's make the wood be here. And then we're going to have the world block importer. If I click you there, does that make sense? I guess. World block exporter. World block reader. Okay. And then we're probably going to need some kind of chest. Right? Yeah, probably some kind of chest. That will need to be... You can tell I'm just winging this and coming up with it off the top of my head, right? Item interface? Yeah. That could be cool. Alright. So now if we get our block reader, we'll see... Block stone bricks. Now, can you, world block exporter, place all item blocks? I might just want a true variable there. Place item block, place item blocks. Do I just give you an item? Is that what I give you? Type item. Type item, cocoa beans. Yeah? Now if I give you cocoa beans? We, oh, hey, look! Ha -ha! Ha, 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 ha ha! Look at that! How cool! Alright, so taking a peek at this, I think I've found that if we look at the block aspect here, there is a plant age attribute <clears throat> that accepts block and outputs an integer. So if we give it the block and we get the integer output and we put the block in here and we put the integer in here, it's reporting two. Aha, age zero. Age zero. Age zero. Why you should actually be reporting to. Oh, it might be just a visual update thingy because it's definitely reporting to. Yeah, it's definitely reporting to. I think that's just a visual bug. I'm assuming this will actually work in reality. So then what we want to do is we're going to say equals two. So we're going to want an integer of the number two. Okay. So this is how old the block is. This is the number two. Then we're going to say equals if the age of the block equals number two true. Okay. So then you guys can go in here and on the block importer pick up all blocks will be if it's two. Cool. So that's true. Pick up all blocks. I expected that that would work.
channel zero. Is this channel zero? Interface channel zero, yes. And this is also interface channel zero. So I expect this to be working now. Why you know working, buddy? You're even reporting true. Yes, true, true. So world item importer, why you know pick items up? I might need to add an ally here. Let's see, so if we go into our map, allies, integrated tunnels, play fake player. Oh, hello. There we go. <laughs> Literally as soon as I did that, it worked. So reminder, uh, you need to allow fake players to manipulate your chunks because there's chunk protection going on here, right? Uh, so this is also true of create and a couple other mods that have fake players. Fully grown. Psst, this is the part where you work. Oh, that's annoying. That was that is not client server interaction issues. That is something's up. What is up with you, sir? Why are you suddenly being uh, shenanigans? Wonder if that's some kind of bug because that ain't good. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. How would one? Interesting. Now if I placed it manually, does that make a difference? No. Huh. Man, it's all working perfectly, except it's not. And that's super frustrating. Well, guys, all I can say is I think this is a bug. I'm pretty sure this is a bug in integrated dynamics. Because, um, look, if I update the network in any way, it detects that it needs to change. Cool. Like, if I bone meal this and then update the network, see how it says 1? And if I bone meal it again and update the network, see how it says two and then breaks it. And so it's working. I set it up right. I think there's a bug in the mod. For some reason, it's not, I haven't figured out what that reason would be though. It's not a block update thing because you would think that when you right click these blocks, they should trigger an update, right? So like doing something in here should be causing the things and the whatnot. And it, and it doesn't even have to be nearby. Like I can do it like over here, right? And over here. So that's not, it's not like a normal block update issue. So something somewhere in the network is getting stuck and then needs to be restarted by, by changing the network. And I haven't quite figured out what that is. What if I make you happen less often? What if I make you happen less often? So then it's every, you know, 10 ticks is when it all, so it should have ticked by now. Yeah, definitely, like the concept is sound, right? We've got, you know, 63 and 36. I do that. Now we're at 63 and 38. So we're definitely getting the cocoa beans, which was, you know, cool. But it's not working. But it's the, 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 the design is sound, right? Like it should be working. It's a bug. It's not that it's not designed correctly. Unless I'm drastically misunderstanding some aspect um, of this mod. Now the only, I tried placing it manually. It doesn't matter. So it's not due to the placement mechanic. The break, I don't think it's the breaking mechanic. I think it's the block reader because this number doesn't change. So something's funky with the block reader, not recognizing that this block has changed um in and it's yes yeah, it's, it's the block reader it's got to be the block reader right like that's got to be it that's got to be it um now it does this maybe it's the power is it the battery thing i thought i thought battery was disabled right i mean i could try throwing that on there just to make sure 
but I'm pretty sure we detected that battery was disabled, right? So even if you want to say battery is the problem, it doesn't seem to be, right? Yeah. So look, there's power in the battery. It's not because it's not powered. I didn't think that was the case, but I just want to say that in case people in the comments said that was the reason. So what I'm going to do is leave this set up here because technically it's accurate and should be working and it's not. So I'm thinking this is a bug in integrated dynamics and maybe the next update will fix it. I'm going to check in with the uh, mod author there and see if I can help him out because I noticed there was a bug report on his GitHub that looked similar to this. And um, long story short, uh, it's like a work in, like they're talking about it, trying to figure out like what the deal is. So maybe I'll be able to help by showing him what I found. Oh, I know. Anyway, let's get back to this guy now. So what we want is brown dye, right? So brown dye. That was a little sideway and it was cool, but then it turned into not working. So that's a bummer. Uh, so is there like a, besides a U, like, yeah, that's cool, but there's no like simpler, the mill, huh? Milling mechanic. Huh. That's interesting. Neat. Drop or throw items in. Interesting. I think what I'll probably wind up doing is just the simple, the simple approach, right? Yeah, let's just do the simple approach. So I will say that you come from just cocoa beans because we should be able to make just an unlimited number of cocoa beans and not worry about that. So now that we've got brown dye ready, we want to do the brown from Woot, we want to make the brown dye this dude, right? And remember, get rid of pure dye fluid. Shift click it, get it out of there. And then to make you brown dye casing, um, we're going to say brown dye casing, one of these, or 16 of these actually, comes from a brown dye. Cool. So that would be you, and that would be you. And now we should be good to make the amber blocks that we need. And we need 17 of those amber blocks. Cool. So he's gonna get to work. All oh, right, I have to make this recipe too. Um, so the brown die casing needs to be here and you need to be this guy, an extra C. There you go, boom. And then you're going in there doing that thing. And we've got amber blocks, sweet. 20 of them, perfect, perfect. All right, now factory connectors, we're gonna need 11 of. That seems easy enough, but that needs amber blocks, which we currently have enough of, but I'm gonna get my amber blocks out of here and my amaranth blocks. So we need 10 of these and we need 17 of these for a tier, um, tier two, right? So now if I want my factory connectors, we're gonna want 11. So you're gonna have to craft more brown dye plates. Cool? Not a big deal though. Not a big deal. And remember, we get 16 plates per die. So it's not like we need a ton of die here. So I'm not worried too much about the whole situation, right? Uh, now we need one primary base, which needs pink die plates. So let's get that going. So pink die, we're gonna have to add in here, right? Um, is there like a, yeah, I could do it this way. I'm gonna do it that way. Pink dye can be made like that, okay. And clearly we're gonna need more craft and doohickeys there. But now pink dye casings are gonna be in a processing recipe. So one pink dye will yield 16 pink dye casings, okay, and then one to one this, don't forget to remove the fluid. Cool. So you go there, you go here, and then this guy will be this recipe with an extra C. And we'll see if this is a problem or not. I guess we'll find out, yeah? 
I guess we'll find out. Let's try it. So now if I want my primary base thingy, start, start. Oh look, it's not a problem. Perfect. It or dictionaried it. Beautiful. And now my primary base thingy is ready to go. Nice. Secondary base. We need three of those. One, two, three. Which needs blue and light blue, as a matter of fact. Blue and light blue. So I'm going to do these two off camera because I think you've got it now, right? You get the gist of how this works. So I'm going to go teach the refined storage system blue and light blue, and we'll be right back. All right, we're ready to go. Boom and boom. So these guys should have both been made by now, and they were. Uh, and if we need to, we could always do stack upgrades or something to speed up the export of that, but I'm not losing sleep over it. And that'll get us our three secondary bases. Cool. Now we need perk slots is the next one. Uh, perk slots we need four of. So this mod, you definitely need to automate all the things. Purple die plate, next next one, be right back. And FYI, this is the last slot here. Remember at the beginning of the episode when I was preparing to have another crafter here? Yeah, it's gonna have to happen, I suspect. Not a big deal, but it's gonna have to happen. All right, the rest of these seem to be going pretty smoothly now. I think I've got most of the things in there. Loot exporters done, ingredient importers done, mob controller. Didn't I teach you how to do mob controllers? No, I thought I did mob controllers. I guess not, I guess I never taught that. Oh, because it's an anvil thing. Oh, that's right. It may not be, it may not be automatable. It may not be automatable. Is that possible? I need a prism and I need Stygian iron and I need a mob shard. Oh, that's right, okay. So the mob controller, we need a mob one, two, four. So we need at least one, and we need up to four. So this is how you determine which mobs are going to be spawned. Okay, so the last thing we need then is a cell. Uh, basic cell, I hope we'll do sufficiently to get started. And that guy is apparently a thousand millibuckets per tick transfer rate and can hold 10,000 millibuckets. Cool. All right, so this should be, if I'm not mistaken, this should be all the things we need to get wood up and running, right? Um, so let's let's stick you guys all in here for the time being, all the wood things, because we now need to go get a mob shard. Um, so a mob shard from wood, attack mob with shard to capture, kill mobs to fill the shard. Shard must be in your hot bar to fill, can be cleared in a crafting table, unprogrammed. Right? Okay. So, um, this I might wind up making... So a shard die is quartz and obsidian. So quartz and obsidian. And where's my... Yeah, hammer. Yeah, hammer stands for yet another hammer, by the way, which I love the name of. Boom. Mob shard. I don't need to automate these. Number one, because I'm out of automation slots over in my auto crafter and number two because I don't need to automate these end of sentence <laughs> so now we have to decide what mob we want to spawn so how are we for ender pearls eh, not great not great on the ender pearls uh how do I know what tier mobs because different things relate to different tiers um these are all the blocks and what they do. Ah, so the primary is the first one. Okay, that makes sense. Um, a lot of these, they don't describe what they do. Some of them do. Perks are a thing, but here's the deal. Factory tiers. Um, lower value mobs can be used in higher tier factories, but higher tier, higher value mobs need higher tier factories, right? So how do I know which mobs work in which factories? Right, here's the tier two factory that I'm working towards, which is cool. But how do I know which mobs can be spawned at different factory tiers? That is actually a really good question. Will I know once I capture the mob? Mm. You want to pop to the end and just start with Enderman? Because why not? We could do that. 
and a portal. So we're going to go murderize some Endermen. They're Endermen. They deserve it. So I believe it was hit the Endermen to attune it to Endermen. And now we have to kill five of them. And it has to be in your hotbar. See? Kills one out of five. Beautiful. Three out of five. And five out of five. Fully programmed. Perfect. And then to home we go. Cool. And now we can use this thing in the Stygian anvil with an iron plate and a prism, which we're going to have to figure out how prisms are made. How pray tell our prisms made? Glass. Any kind of glass in the injection press will make a prism. So if it turns out we need more prisms, do we need more prisms? Or is this literally all it's used for? This is literally all it's used for. So if I just do this, yes, and then we should have our prism. Perfect. So that, and then the Stygian iron plate, which we can auto craft, right? It's going to make, it's going to make, it's going to make. See it? Smelting. And now it's going to do the iron plate bit. Beautiful. Prism or prison? Good question. Good question, buddy. So these two together, and then the yeah hammer. And that gets us, I have the power. Sweet. Mob controller. Enderman. Right click for required information. Right click for required tier information. Required tier exemptus tier four. What? That's a really high tier. That should be in the book, sir. That's all I'm saying. I guess it's on the bottom there, it tells you. Well, today we learned a thing or two about that. Okay, then. We need another mob shard. Stat. Uh, we're going to need to find something that's less teary. Uh, are we low on string? How are we for string? How about spiders? Yeah, we don't have a ton. Like, we have a bit of string, but we could always use more string. Spiders could be cool. Should we do spiders? Let's do spiders. Hopefully that's tier one or two. I would love a tier list, because if Enderman's tier four, right, you know, I'm going through the Rolodex of mobs in my head. What's tier three going to be? I don't even know. So I'm going to head out far and away from our main base, right, where, where mobs will spawn, and I'm going to kill a few spiders once it's night timey, and then we'll see how this goes. Deal? All right. Be right back once it's spider spawning time. I see spiders. Hello, sir. So I left click you, now I have to kill five of you. So that's one. There's one over here, according to my map. That's two. There's one over here, according to my map. What are you? A wild and stalker. Ah, there's a couple of you. What are you guys from Ars Novo? Interesting. That's new. When did they get... When did... What? Also, did they not drop an item? I feel like an item dropped, but I don't see any new items in my inventory. Do what now? Auto pickup is disabled, so yeah. It's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Didn't it look like an item dropped? It looked like an item dropped. Huh. Anyway, need to find more spiders. I mean, it's very possible, it's exceedingly possible, that Ars Nouveau got an update, like, weeks ago, and I just so rarely am in a position where mobs spawn that I just didn't encounter it yet, right? Fully programmed mob shard. Hooray! Boop. Left my door open. Dire, please. All right, so now we need another piece of glass to make ourselves a prism. There's nothing stopping me from just making, like, a stack of prisms. I'm just putting that out there. Literally nothing. <clears throat> but, you know. So you, you, and the Stygian iron plate, which should only take a moment to make. There you are. And hammer. Hey. What in the what? Oh, you're the intern. Well, that's going to explain why that did what it did. I need the yeah hammer. Sorry, they both look similar. All right. So now you need Zelator tier one. All right, cool. So a tier one 
Woot structure can summon spiders and kill them for us. That's cool. Um, now, how am I going to find out if you need items? That's a really good question. I guess we're going to find out soon. Alas, it is wrapping up point for the episode. So by soon, I mean in two days. <laughs> uh, so we'll wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time. We'll build the Woot multi-block structure. We'll figure out how to feed, uh, if needed, items into it to spawn spiders. Right Now the Woot Tier 2 has support for four mob controllers. See the second from the bottom there? One to four mob controllers. Which means we can spawn four different types of mobs in it. Which is cool. Um, and I assume that number is going to grow for a tier 3, 4, or 5, right? If we bump this guy up to tier 5, factory, uh, nope, I lied completely. Nope, 1 to 4 mob controllers still, so that is absolutely untrue. Um, but that's nice to know. A tier 1 factory can do 1 mob controller, and the rest can do 4. So, never mind. But still, we can spawn four different types of mobs. So we'll come back next episode. We'll build this thing. We'll start doing it. And then we're going to look into the perks stuff so that we can figure out how to make the items needed to get tier three, four, and five. And then once we get a tier five, we should be all the loots all the time, in theory. Maybe. Potentially. I don't know. We'll find out. For now, Bell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.